Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this month, the Politics of Self um, Hangout. It's actually an on-demand talk. Uh, we're doing it offline, but it's going to be an engaging discussion with Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, everybody. Uh, and um, well, you, all, you can only send us uh, comments uh, on this uh, YouTube video. And today we're going to talk about the bigger picture and ourselves. Uh, our relationship uh, to politics from um, an insider perspective and actually thinking of us in relation to politics and to the world in general. And we realize that this understand, the understanding of how the world works will influence um, our attitudes and even in shaping our opinions or any ideas that we have. So it's, uh, it's really time to get back to self and to understand how those um, definitions that we have given to politics are currently even preventing us from seeing the bigger picture. So um, I'm going to now hand over to Joe to um, tell me your perspective on this uh, bigger picture um, and, and uh, how do you bring it back to self? So let me start with something that is um, pretty tangible, something that most people can relate to, which is what comes up in your head when you hear the word politician? And you'll often think about, um, you know, the political figures that you see on TV, you know, the presidential elections and uh, the mayors and governors and uh, the chancellors and all of those, those political people. You know, so we have this operating idea that politics is done by those people only. And this is a disservice because what we're doing is we're already accepting this idea that um, policy decisions and laws and things that govern the way we live and the rules that we agree to live by um, should be dictated to us by people that we largely have no co connection to. Um, when I look at the situation here in the United States where I live, uh, we have this phenomenon going on uh, where we have this figure uh, I'm sure we all will know who I'm talking about without mentioning his name. And that should be looked at too, because you already should have an idea who I'm going to be talking about. And that's, that's another you know, layer of how our politics has become so detached and in a way commercialized and become a form of infotainment. Um, because you'll, you'll know I'm going to talk about Trump, right? Donald Trump. And with the, this is not to pick on him or to uh, say that you know, he's, he's wrong or whatever. That's not this discussion. But what I want to touch on is the fact that let's, let us say, if, even if it isn't Donald Trump, let's take Hillary Clinton or any of the other nominees of the, the presidential hopefuls. Do we have anything really in common with those people? Do they really represent us? Can they actually understand what it means to work a 70 hour job just to get by week to week, to have mortgage debts, to have to borrow money just to survive? Can they really relate to that? I mean, I'm, I'm sure many of them have had to work very hard to get to where they are in their political careers. But when we're talking about the day to day decisions, are we really servicing ourselves when we're talking about having a democracy and being represented? Are we really engaging that element of democracy when we're sending people that we largely have no actual connection to? Mm. Yeah. And to, to kind of take this a little bit further, what happens when we send people to represent us in the current system? I mean, we understand that not everybody can go and vote. That would be a mess. So we, we should have representatives that can vote uh, on behalf of a delegation, on behalf of a people. You know, this can work, and uh, that's not a bad thing. But what actually happens, though, mm. is you'll find that when we do send these elected officials or when these people come into office, 
they actually stop representing the will of the people, and they often have to go into a political mode where they have to deal with lobbyists and special interests. And let's say we put somebody into office that um, really wants to put forward new policies that will help uh, a particular community. Well, in order to do that, they have to build relationships, they have to curry favor in order to get funding, and all of that comes with compromise. All of that comes with you having to make deals with people you normally would not want to make deals with. Mm -hmm. And by extension, that means all of us that put this officer in, in, in our place to deal for us, to represent us, you know, we're kind of letting that happen on our watch. Um, we're, we're letting that happen um, through our consent. And if we put ourselves in that person's shoes, if we put ourselves in the place of our elected officials, would we really want to be doing that? Are we really satisfied with those kinds of relationships? Are we really able to be honest with ourselves when we look at the situation of how money comes into play in politics? And mm -hmm. if the answer is no, then we got to look at, okay, well, is there anything better that we can do? And is the current system really the only way that we have? So, very cool. Do, what, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, there, there's this, um, I've heard people saying, uh, oh, if I were in their position, I would likely to do, do the same. So, when we bring it back to self, then that's our point of integrity. Would we do it that? actually or are we already doing that in our own lives we may not need to, we don't need to be presidents in order to know what is best for our family for ourselves uh, for the people around us and still we're still um sometimes we still uh, well we lie to, be, to first with to, to start with or we do things that are um that may harm other people because we we keep feeding these competitive patterns in our heads or and um, so that point we can start already practicing without being in such a place of responsibility that one specific person or entity represents. But we can do that in our own lives because eventually we will be also leading people um, either around us or family or friends or even our own job. So we can stand as an example. Um, and it's really, as you were mentioning, um, in relation to the people that are there, that they seem to be disconnected from the reality of the majority of the people. Um, how we do that as well in our lives, where there are things happening around us that we may not even want to watch, it's not to look at, we want to ignore. For as long as my life is okay or I'm comfortable, then I am not. I don't feel responsible towards the rest. So this is a way of bringing the bigger picture into our uh, small, smaller world that is merely a representation of what's happening outside. And this is really empowering because then we re realize that we are our own president in a way of our own lives. And if we accept something in our lives, if we accept either dishonesty or um, anger or um, revenge patterns, things like that, then obviously when we hear presidents or any other leader talking on those terms, we're not going to even recognize that something wrong in there, that that should not be the case. We should not be fighting against each other or seeing enemies everywhere unless we have that in our own lives already. So this is a really cool way to understand that Whatever we accept outside, we're already accepting inside. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that really cannot be said enough times. I and mean, we, we definitely need to keep reminding ourselves uh, because we do live such that we, we tend to look at what's outside and think that just because it is outside that we are not personally in any way involved or that it doesn't reflect who we are just because we can say, we can point to it and say, no, no, it's over there. They're the ones being bad. They're the ones going to war. I'm not at war. I'm not going and fighting people. I'm against the war. But guess what? The war is, the, the war is going on under your name. 
Mm. Uh, it's going on your behalf. In order for you to get the benefits that you believe you can get from the government, the war is going to continue. And until we realize that the things that we get the benefit of come at a cost, the things that we enjoy have to come um, from somewhere. And the more we say, I don't want to think about that, it's too complicated, let the politicians figure it out. As long as I get my social security, as long as you know, the roads get paved, as long as all of that is taken care of, I'll keep voting for you. Uh, but just don't bother me with the specifics. Mm. And, and that's, how we, that's how we paint ourselves into the situation we have now, where so many of us are not aware of the, the danger that we're in, the, the cost of having this current system is actually not worth it. We're actually greatly uh, limiting ourselves, our ability to co exist, to cooperate, to create new forms of systems, to innovate. And a lot of that is being held back because uh, of us being in favor of keeping things working the way they are. Yeah. So, and the ways we think as well. Yes, because yes. That's where it starts. Yeah, definitely. And so, uh, go ahead. You know, I, one thing that I noticed, so in terms of my background, I, I started by studying international relations. I could look at the world and see this is how I think, I see a vision, let me study that. Let me see what's how out there, how this world out there works, what are the systems, um, society, and all of that out there. And I was actually forgetting myself. So I wasn't that successful in my own relationships, for example. Um, there was a lot of things that was kind of accumulated and I saw the world out there, my studies, almost as an escape to not look at inside. Mm -hmm. And so, and this was really a big shift in my life whereby I know that if I had continued doing that path, I would become the politician that I thought I would admire or that I wanted, I respected or that I um, resonated with because probably they had the same lifestyles whereby um, you try to keep things contained, uh, maybe you don't share so much your emotions, you don't deal with your own things inside, and then you go out there and you put all your energy and efforts into creating this world, and while well, all the rest is actually not reflecting that anymore, and it's actually a common to see um, even cases, and you see this in movies where you have someone that is very successful either in a profession in business or politics, but then in their home, there's lots of deception, a mm. um, lot of mistakes happening, and there's a separation. So these days it's happening, it's actually, my process is actually to investigate from inside and, and then be able to see something else out there that it's not happening right now in the way we relate to politics. But it actually takes some time and it took, like to let go of all of this idea of wanting to create a change separate from myself. And that is a sort of entertainment that some people that may have also this energy and this willingness to make the change out there. But if we don't start by changing how we think, how we think about ourselves, how we think about others, investigate all those judgments that we may have towards the world and, and things like that, then we want to be able to make a change actually outside in the world. Yeah. That's if I could... Looking if at I, the bigger picture, yeah? Yes. Definitely looking at the, the bigger context of everything. And if I may, I'd, I'd like to share here kind of just like an analogy uh, because I find that this is something that helped me kind of process my own perspective, and the analogy goes like this. Uh, let's say you, um, through the course of your life, become aware that there's a problem in the world, in the way things are done. And you, through investigation and a lot of hard work, um, discover a solution. And you realize that this solution, if it can be implemented, will, will basically change everything, make everything better and you put all of your heart, all of your energy into it, and you're doing it because you want to save people. You want to change the world. You want to make it better. But 
you miss a very important thing, which is that you alone didn't create this world. That this world and all of its problems and situations are created constantly by everyone. So when we narrow our focus in that way and go into this mindset of, okay, I see what the problems are, I understand how the system works, and because of that, I know what the solutions are, and I'm going to do it for everybody, um, that actually will backfire because you're not addressing the fact that everyone else has to walk through kind of a similar process as you so that everyone can take responsibility because it's impossible for you to, it may be possible for you to introduce a new system. It may be possible for you to make some changes here and there and get new policies put into place. And that could have an effect, uh, definitely. But you have to address the fact that everyone is what created what's here. And unless we're not, a, uh, unless we take that into account, we really miss like a whole piece of the puzzle. And I find that so many times we see people that have solutions and, and really go for it. And at the end of the day, they feel tired and drained. And we, we hit these walls and we want to just give up. You know, why? Why is it so hard? I just want to change the world. I just want to save the world. Why is everything against me? Well, we're not realizing that um, we, it doesn't matter what systems we put into place. It doesn't matter what kind of politics we use. It doesn't matter necessarily what kind of governments we have or what politicians or what leaders we have. What matters is what are we, all of us together, doing? What are we, all of us together, still accepting and still going along with and not changing? Mm -hmm. And I think that is uh, a very vital and missing part of political discussion where it always kind of shifts into, oh, what political candidate are you going to support? What party do you belong to? Yeah. And it's always shifting it outside of you. You know, give it to somebody else. Why are you, why are you getting involved in politics? Just, you know, go pick a politician. It's like a sports team, right? You just pick a side and you hope they win. Um, and that, that is, that is something that I think we can grow out of. I think we deserve better than that. And I think we can achieve much better than that. What yeah. That? Well, it's a great analogy. And I could see myself as that, almost like a savior uh, way of thinking and, and yeah. feeling very bad about myself because I was not doing it. Uh, I was even not placing myself in that situation and thinking that whatever else I was doing was not relevant or was not actually contributed to, contributing to the bigger picture. Um, what in fact it is, everything, every single actions that we do in our lives, they contribute or not, but they can contribute to, they are contributing to the bigger picture um, if we, we make it like, um, if we bring that um, power back to ourselves. And what you were saying was actually a need to redefine what leadership is and what power is, where at the moment we have given away this concept as something like a leader is an individual where actually it is not, it can't be, it can be one individual as in, in, in terms of individuals, but it's the, the, the ability for a leader, a leadership to be each and every one of us being responsible for our own actions and our uh, own participation. And by this, it's actually spreading the power and empowering people uh, to do the best they can and to, um, to go in a, in a direction that everyone sees it is the best for, for, the, for everyone. So yeah. this is a, these are, and, and these are concepts that today, if you go and study politics at university or in any other course, um, these concepts are still very much separate from, from us uh, in the way of and still associating that with a specific institution or a way or like an organizational uh, type that is actually not reflecting the way things need to be in terms of being more diversified and um, and to to stop that polarization that you were mentioning, which currently that's how even power is defined, the ability to make another 
do something against their will <laughs> or manipulation and things like that, where it's always about the polarity, the enemy construct and all of this. this. So um, if we are able to, to, to redefine these concepts and then leave them practically in, in our lives, then it will eventually trans well, transpire into the institutional um, arena. Yeah, it's um, it's very interesting when we look at institutions, and uh, so often we we will go along with the idea that these institutions tell us who we are, how to think, and what we should do, but we don't realize that these institutions actually are reflecting who we've already accepted ourselves to be. They're just showing it to us. Um, and they're meaning to say they're not the source and they're not the authority, really. Uh, the institutions that we have um, kind of arise out of our own sense of separation. They arise, they are institutions outside of us. They, they exist that way because we separate ourselves from personal responsibility. Um, and to a great extent, we allow these institutions uh, an, an inordinate amount of power when it comes to being able to influence us because we give them all of the authority. You know, they're the experts mm. and we trust them implicitly. So mm. when it comes to um, somebody that wants to start looking at the world differently, where do we go? We will go to the institutions of learning. We will go to the news agencies. We will go to all of these various silos and schools of information and not understanding that these institutions by their own design have blind spots. And we kind of perpetuate ourselves into, you know, on the one hand, knowing that there's something not quite right with the world and wanting information and going to these institutionalized sources of information, not seeing that they're part of the same repeating cycle, that they're blind um, in many ways to their own part of the bigger context of why things are not working the way that we want them to work. And the key to that, again, comes back to self. We are still waiting uh, you know, for mom and dad to sort things out for us, you know, ever since when we were kids, we kind of had that growing up. Most of us mm -hmm. did anyway. And we never really grow out of that. You know, we never grow out of this idea that, oh, if the government is here to take care of me and the, or the politicians or the experts, oh, they all know better. So I, I should just follow them. Yeah, and the same, yeah, and that applies to, um, to education, to how we are educated to see that and to, um, to have those um, definitions of authority as in someone outside and um, not actually asking us a question so we can ask ourselves, okay, is this the right thing for me? Or does this make sense? Or how does that, how does that work? And if I'm not in agreement, then I can speak up. I can actually challenge that in a way that it's not being against it, but it's really trying to understand. And yeah. we are, I mean, from my experience where I grew up and the institutions that I attended, um, there wasn't actually this um, this culture of asking questions because if you were to ask questions, then you were dumb. You didn't know enough. You didn't read enough. As if all the information was in the books, uh, but the books were specific to what the reading lists were given to you. Right. So that is so. It's so well set up in a way. <laughs> we have to give kudos to the way the system is in a way because it keeps that loop and. The more you study, the more you believe that that knowledge um, is real because it, it is how it works. It, you can see that happening in the system, but it doesn't mean, mean that that's the only way um, to coexist or to, um, to function, especially when it comes to wealth distribution and wealth management um, and resources. Because then we yeah. see the consequence and the consequence is just drastic. Um, so, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the current design of when we talk about the bigger picture and, in a way, the deception of the design in itself? That, uh, well, that's, that's, pretty, that's a pretty vast topic. Um, because you're really looking at 
a world system. When I when I say world system, I'm talking about every single institution, um, the financial institutions, the educational, the health institutions, the governmental. All of these uh, systems that are existing in the world exist because of the the way that basically money exists. Basically, um, the way that we have turned money into something that is foreign to what its initial purpose is. And let me explain this by saying that what we have now isn't money. Uh, we have this idea of, of money and we have certain beliefs about what it is, but we don't actually fully understand it. Uh, money has become um, a liability. Money has become something that we can't live without. It's become the ultimate drug and uh, we have become blind to the side effects of the withdrawals. When we see populations that don't have access to money, we can see its negative effects very clearly. Um, but we then don't question our, our own um, sense of being when we have money. We don't question whether or not the security or the, the feeling of security that that gives us is real or sustainable. If we have a world where in the absence of that money, you are in poverty, you are in jeopardy of not having the ability to live. So um, this, this issue of money itself is already so deep, so vast a topic. And it's such a, uh, an elephant in the room that um, it's, it's hard to even begin to start taking it apart and really looking at it. But... I mean, I think that's just one example of how far separated we've become from our own physical, practical living reality, where we have these ideas and these uh, programmed systems and thoughts about what life is. You know, life is about accumulating money and paying your mortgage and uh, going into debt and managing your debt. Since, says who? Since when? When has that ever been life? You know, how, what about the fact that we share a physical world together that has abundant resources, that has a nearly unlimited potential for creative um, expression for every single life form here? Why is that not the, the, the driving force that wakes us up in the morning? Yeah. Why is our first thought in the morning, am I going to make it through the day? Do I have enough coffee to sit through my job that I hate? Why have we accepted that as the norm? You know, these are all questions that we don't hear in political debates. But these are the more important questions, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I completely agree. And what's our, what our, our purpose of being here? Is our purpose to fight or flight and be in this constant state of stress and creating stress for other people? Um, or is it, is it even um, this sense of wanting to give up? When, because we, there are people that are very aware of what we're talking and they, they still also um, try to fight, fight back, which is still participating in the exact same pattern. Yes. Um, and you were mentioning that money is foreign, and it's interesting because even when we talk about foreign affairs, it's something outside, out there in the world. And um, if you, if, if in your education or your upbringing, you did not have an introduction to the world out, to the world outside of where you live, then you will may even feel afraid of of anything that it's that you think it's foreign for you as well, and therefore then ideas of um, racism and discrimination will be accepted because you believe that that fear towards another people that you may never met, then you believe that it's real. Right. Um, so when we, um, yeah, especially like that side of education also and um, about education, educating the new generation, is it about putting them into a school, an institution that will still keep feeding the same patterns over and over again and the same ideas and beliefs? Or is it about actually um, like releasing the, that potential that it's already in there? We can see it. We can see how 
um, babies develop without us having to tell them anything. They just have that in them and we need to keep nurturing our own ability to 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 be to create that awareness towards the world and to cultivate that especially like the, the relationship with nature and the environment uh, because the consequences nowadays is the, the the constant destruction in the name of of the um, that acquisition of resources and and consumption, for example, it's yeah. also interlinked. <laughs> well, everything is interrelated. Every single thing, and the beauty of it is, it can seem daunting. It can seem like it's way too much, but it really it isn't because it always comes back to the same point: you, yeah. individuals. Um, so when we look at, for example. Um, Let's, let's take something, um, let's take education. What we have is not education. What we have is, uh, again, we've, we've outsourced everything, right? We've, we've given up our power and authority to everything outside of us. And what we have is not education. What we have is indoctrination. When we look at healthcare, we don't have healthcare. We have illness management. We, we, when we look at governments, we don't actually have a government. We have, um, you know, political, uh, public control. Um, we, we can look at security. We don't have security. We have the threat of violence that keeps us in line. You know, these are the fine, fine lines that need to be explored when we look at our role in the world that we are creating and going along with. And, and we want to so badly blame the institutions or the governments or the military for not doing a good job, for not doing the right thing. But on the same hand, we, we, we can't make that statement without including ourselves. So uh, when we look at leadership, uh, we want leaders that inspire us, leaders that don't talk down to us or abuse the faith that we put into them. And unfortunately, those don't exist because we have not become that. Yeah. Um, we have not embodied that. Um, when we want a, a society that is able to grow out of the, the fight or flight, the constant competition and fear, well, we need to do that. We need to combat that within ourselves. So when we're looking at the world, we have to stop you know, allowing our emotions to rule us. We have to learn how to look at the world not... I don't want to say dispassionately because that kind of um, insinuates that you don't care, but to look at it in a way where you're not influenced by the personal egos and fears and uh, the weird anxieties that we've developed in our separation from each other, but rather mm -hmm. to start looking at the world, understanding that you ultimately have a lot of responsibility because yeah. you are an example. And that example is, I think, one of the most important things, more so than any political leader that can come about and do things for you, is the example that you set for yourself and others. Because that is more powerful than any vote that you can exercise once every four years. That is a statement about life. And that is something that you live each and every moment. And that is incredibly empowering and incredibly scary because it means you are responsible for every moment of it. Yeah, but that, that's that's the key. That's where where the key lies. And and you know, um, I noticed that in in many at least where I come from, um, the political parties and the people that are part of it, they all have like family that is part of it, or they they were they put in their education involved, like the, mm. the best schools. So there's this kind of acceptance that their path took them where they are now and someone that maybe were never had anyone in the family that were involved in politics or had any leadership skills then we kind of um judge ourselves and we believe that we're not good enough to take on that responsibility even though we already have it by being in this world in this present moment now but there's this perception that uh, we can't do that or there's something else limiting us or that people will not believe in us um, and, and therefore and this is the kind of 
conversation that we accept and it's actually then re make uh, make sure that people that may that could make a difference are not actually in those positions because we are already um, cutting us short in a way and um, so I would say that it's um, it's really about a decision. It's a decision that we take individually in our own lives uh, and that we may then decide to go into, because we're already applying that, then new doors will open. We can even start engaging in conversation that before we would never be involved because all we wanted to know was maybe the football club or the latest singers or something, but now we're actually you know what, I do care about this and now I am empowered enough to be in that conversation, challenge the status quo, the, to even challenge friends. But however, what I notice is in many cases, and I had that experience myself, which is there are certain conversations that you're not going to have with friends because you're not going to talk about religion or politics because that will create usually like disagreement or yeah a lot of friction a friction exactly so it's easy to keep things as they are and to not kind of um, make any waves so this is a way that we can by changing this relationship to even to well first with us but to others and how even to communicate instead of coming across as also wanting to impose something we can start even just asking questions to other people the same way we are asking inside of us does this make sense if you were in that position what would you do if you were a president who would you be who are yeah. you in this current moment so this can be an interesting way to kind of slowly but surely bring back this our eagerness to to be that change in our current environment yeah definitely i i think leadership is really important to to redefine uh, so often, it's it's always about something outside. You know, we're waiting for someone else or something else to lead us. Um, when in fact, leadership is uh, an innate responsibility that everyone has, and what that means is different for everybody. The principle is the same, but the expressions are are depending on each and every individual, and there are as many as there are people. Um, meaning to say. Leadership is about you leading yourself, and that means you don't accept anything less than the greatest ideal that you know you can achieve. That means not, um, you know, accepting uh, things like loss of integrity or going along with things that you know cannot be gone along with anymore, and you know, having a sense of purpose and drive and to not feel as though you constantly have to give in to the peer pressure of a system that doesn't work. Um, having that kind of strength uh, is not easy. It's something that needs to be built. And that is the mark of a leader. You know, it's not necessarily how many other people you get to follow you. It's whether or not the example that you're setting is one that people should follow. So uh, all of these things really comes back to redefining and really looking at these things for ourselves. So um, I really think it's, it's important to start having these conversations you know, with yourself, of course, for a bit, and then reach out and, and redefine what political speech is about. Is it really about what candidate you're gonna support? How about we talk about what causes we want to achieve, what we want out of life, what we, want to create and how we're going to get there and how we're going to cooperate mm. whether or not we have a candidate that will do that for us well how about we become those candidates ourselves we don't need their permission to do what's best for ourselves and everyone and yeah. i think that is a new era of leadership that we we can begin embarking on absolutely joe and i i would say that that's a great way to to hand, to end this this chat um, and to, to leave this, um, this positive note of actually, this is, you have yourself, you have everything you need in order to create that change in your own life. And then together in the world we want to, to live in and to, to leave for other generations to come.
And uh, we are going to, well, we have these, um, these uh, sessions and talks every month, once a month. Usually it's a live hangout. And um, so, yeah, for those watching us, uh, you can comment, you can send us comments, any questions, and you're more than welcome to join in our next discussion. Thank you very so, much. Any, any last moment, last thoughts? Sorry, I forgot to ask you. Any last thoughts you <laughs> share? Uh, no, that, that I think um, will complete that for me. Um, and, and yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, it was a very interesting conversation, very productive. And um, yeah, food for, th um, food for thought <laughs> to, to keep applying that and, and develop that, that, that strength that um, we may not have, but there's nothing preventing us from creating. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.